Gujarat alkalis recorded an 18% jump in their Q4 revenues, but higher power and fuel costs were a drag on the bottom line at a time when raw material prices were cooling off. To help us understand the numbers and further detail, joining us on the phone line is the managing director of the company, Mr. P.K. Gera. Uh, so thank you so much, first of all, for taking the time out and speaking to us. Uh, coming to your you know, top line, it has seen a strong 18% growth uh, on a year-on-year -year basis. Can you help us understand uh, what has been the underlying volume growth and the realization in the quarter? Yeah, the quarter we have, uh, re I mean, we have a reasonable realization. Uh, but the quarter was marred by higher costs. Uh, the, there was... Uh, uh, the, the 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 costs of raw material have gone up, but uh, overall we have made a good number in the year. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the, that's what you have seen. You have just seen the numbers and spoken those, so, so that's very good. Uh, yeah, the reason is a prices during the year have been very favorable for the chloroalkylene industry. One, because imports got restricted because of the BIS registration on caustic. You know, the, uh, the, 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 the exporters of other countries required BIS registration in the last year. So that was one reason that the market prices prevailing were very attractive for us. So we could good, do a good job for ourselves. But raw material costs have also gone up, particularly power. So the, that is another challenging issue for us because we don't have a coal-based plant. Those who have a coal-based plant can generate power at rupees four to five, depending upon, and our cost of power is high. Mm -hmm. So, so that's the reason that uh, our profit would have been far more higher right. had it been not the power taking little, you know, toll on us. Mr. Gera, if I if I could address uh, your margins, while uh, while you have spoken about the higher uh, you know power and fuel cost, uh, uh, the margins they have come in at about 33.4 percent. Correct me if I'm wrong. Versus 41.2 uh, percent in the same quarter last year. The raw material price that you were speaking about largely consisted of the power and fuel cost, but otherwise, uh, the the cost of uh, materials purchased that has been largely stable on a year on year basis. In fact, uh, over the last quarter, which is the Q3 of FI19. Uh, it has come off and is stabilized around the 25% mark as a percentage of your overall sales. How are you seeing the raw material picture uh, going forward from here on? Look, the, the raw material is other than power is nothing. You know, 60% of the cost is power. The other, other is salt. You know, the, we, we all use nowadays wash salt. So that cost, because earlier we were using ordinary salt, but now we have started using wash salt that reduces our chemicals and, you know, the, that, that's, that's barely less than 10%, you know, of the cost of the entire things. Because, so, so the, it is the power, you know, which is the game which plays everyone around. Because you just electrolyze the, uh, the, the brine and you get, you know, uh, the caustic soda, hydrogen and chlorine. Mm -hmm. And yes, chlorine disposal becomes many a time challenge. Last year, chlorine disposal was very good. We, it was not negative. Otherwise, in the industry, it's uh, very often happened that, that chlorine demand is low and chlorine supply is high. At that time, we give uh, our chlorine buyers money, you know, practically to, to take chlorine from us in priority to others. Right. Uh, so, that, so then, sir, if you can help us understand how are you seeing the trend as far as the power and fuel cost is concerned, it has surely increased by 32% on a year-on-year -year basis, but you have also been trying to de-bottleneck some of your capacities. You've, uh, you've replaced uh, some 700 old generation uh, you know, machineries yeah. with yeah. the new, more power-efficient ones. Going right. forward, do you expect the power and fuel cost to come off, and as a result of which, do you see the margins improve from here on? Yeah, you see, power, we do have a basket in the sense we have a wind power station, we have a solar power plant, and then we have a contract with Adani's power through GUENL, Gujarat Urja Vikas Limited, you know. So in this whole basket, and we have a GIPCL dedicated power for the Baroda. So we, we, all this power cost, uh, is, all this power is pooled to and uh, reach the average power cost now it is again linked to the crude prices ultimately in mm -hmm. the market how the, because we it's all gas based 
uh, GIBCL has gas based. We in the the H plant are gas based, uh, 90 megawatt. We are using one of them, that 42 units of 45, and we also buy for the, the H from uh, wind power and all that. You know, wind power is of course very cheap, and that that brings us around a little over six rupees. But yes, the price of the power for the H had gone up more than Baroda. Uh, so that that is, the result is we are very hopeful that crude will not play truant or create problem for us more than uh, it has done last year, and uh, the the full futures on crude mm -hmm. determine my power cost. Sir, is it fair to assume that you know since the power and fuel cost is largely you know in line with how the gas prices move, and there's always that lag of a, of a quarter at least when it comes to how the crude prices and the gas prices move. So, does in that sense, given the kind of uh, you know rally that we've seen in crude oil prices, uh, which have gone up on a year-to-date basis by more than 25 percent, uh, your power and fuel cost will also f increase further, and that would you know put a pressure on your margins, or are you sufficiently hedged, or you are sourcing out? Your power and fuel cost from other players, which would likely bring down that cost from about six rupees that you mentioned to slightly lower, and subsequently aid the margins. Very difficult to say any predictions on the natural gas price. You know, yeah, it is technically it looks mm -hmm. there's a quarter to quarter lag, but it's not that clear lag that you can see from the numbers if you see very closely. You know, and uh, uh, the the link is not very obvious. There is general; it's a general m mindset, but many times the reaction to the crude prices is immediate also because it's demand supply in the market. The, the, the people who buy gas are, you know, they, if their plants are not working for any reason, you know, the pressure comes on the gas immediately, and you know, prices go down. So to say that exactly, but yes, we keep looking for opportunistically, you know, wherever we can make deals on on gas so that we can reduce our costs. So 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 that 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 attempt is always ongoing struggle, you know, we have. So to say how power will actually come up. Last year we were, we could contain it very well. This year we didn't get those opportunities. So, so uh, then then exchange power is also there, but you know policies are also new. Government has come. They may bring out some different policies on gas price, which may affect, you know, and the power and power buying power from exchange is again a challenging task. And then the state government has its own taxes and levies and open on open access power. So, so these all uh, host of variables are there. To predict anything is, to be honest, not a very simple task. It, it really. You have to keep your finger crossed, and we keep trying our best, and uh, we're mixing all the sources and try to get what best we can. And we have a good customer. You must understand, more right. than that, it's a customer relations which matter a lot. We uh, respond to our customers' requirement very efficiently yes. and keep our customers in, in, on a very high stream. And the quality of the products we produce is outstanding, no complaints at all. And if at all there is any complaint, within 24 hours we address that and we sort it out with them. So, so these all play a very important role when you are in the market. Okay. So, sir, so let me ask you something that you would be able to answer with more certainty because you have mentioned uh, uh, in your in your annual report last year that you your company is targeting a top line of 5,000 crore by the end of, uh, you know, 2022. What gives you that confidence and uh, are we on track to achieving that? Yes. Uh, we have a product uh, which we, for which the technology we developed ourselves. This is known as hydrogen hydrate, and the raw material is hydrogen peroxide. We added last year capacity in hydrogen peroxide, and uh, as a result, our number is also shot up because of the additional capacity which came. And uh, this product, hydrogen hydrate technology, is not available in India. We, we, we when we supply. We will be giving a monopolistic position in the sense there will be no other from the in-house making, in the, or rather in domestically making this product. And this is very good for agrochemicals. So, so if this product and uh, comes uh, on stream, we we really see top line coming to 5,000 crore without very significant difficulty. There are other projects also going on, and uh, we hope to handle uh, chlorine by giving it to another new plant, joint venture is coming with uh, Nelco. Uh, we, uh, for 800 tons will come next 2020 July. 
So all these uh, current projects gives me confidence that uh, 5,000 crore should not be a difficulty by 2022. So, uh, can you give us further details with respect to this hydrogen peroxide plant uh, which you have commissioned at Dehaj? It's, it's a total capacity of about 14,000 tonnes uh, and uh, it, as you mentioned, it is you are the only largest player in the country to, to be manufacturing this product. What is the sort of revenues that, that you are expecting from this plant on an annualised basis as well as the project that you mentioned with Nalco uh, for the supply of another key uh, you know, chemical? What, what sort of you know, revenues would those two projects garner for or your company on an annualized basis? Yeah, the, the hydrogen peroxide, 14,000 ton, uh, you know, the predicting a price of a product is a very difficult because hydrogen peroxide, we are, imports are coming from Bangladesh on the, our eastern part of the country. And so we have given up that market, but we are very aggressive and our biggest competitor is national peroxide. And uh, we are competing on a day-to-day -day basis, but uh, on a 100% uh, basis, the, 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 we, we hope to get uh, about, uh, we hope to add about 500 crores on account of a new plant in our top line. And uh, the, there is no reason to, you know, see any problem, you know, because we have our existing distribution channels set up, but yes, the additional capacity is not easily saleable in the market. You have to do a lot of effort. And our team is doing that. And there is no reason to, to have a difficulty in achieving. And uh, the Nalco project uh, is an independent company, to be honest, GNAL. And we have the marketing rights uh, for about if that plant comes in July 2020 and stabilizes by this October. Mm -hmm. So we can easily expect a 1,000 crore coming from that plant also. But that will be an independent company, you know. It will be added to our balance sheet because it's a subsidiary. So 5,000 crore is not a big deal. Right. So lastly, before we let you go, there are several other capacities that are coming on stream for your company, like uh, the mega uh, 100,000 tons per annum chloromethanes plant, uh, as well as the other projects that you are undergoing. Uh, can you help us understand what is the CAPEX yeah. target for FI21 and also uh, an, an update with respect to the timeline by when do you see these projects coming on stream uh, 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 for the company? Yeah, the, uh, where we are the joint venture with Nelco, you know, at D29, the plot number that is called, in that plot itself, we have a chloromethane plant coming up. And that should be by December 20, should be streamed. You know, by that time, the chloromethane uh, will take the uh, hydrochloric acid uh, from the Nelco plant, the GNL, we call it, plant. And the chlorine bulk of chlorine will go to the, in D28, the GNFC plant of T TDI, and that will, so our chlorine is completely taken care of as a result, because in a, in a caustic plant, the issue is of managing the chlorine, and we have done uh, a homework pretty good in a, on, uh, because Nelco's plant, they have to only manufacture. The GACL has to market the entire produce. So we have tied up everything, and we hope this will come on stream, and uh, Chloromethane will add to the GACL because that's a GACL plant and uh, bottom line of about 800 crores when it comes up. Okay, we'll leave it at that, Mr. Gera. Thank you so much uh, once again Thank for taking so the time much. out and uh, all yeah. the very best for the future.